Can everyone see that okay? Yes. Excellent, thank you. So you're gonna have to bear with us as we navigate a virtual kindergarten orientation um, and let us know if um, the sound is off or if you need anything clarified. Um, so if you can believe it, your child is going to be in our class of 2034 in West Aronaquite. Um, and we are so excited about that. 2034 seems like a long way off, but I can tell you I have little ones of my own and it flies by. So we just have a couple things on tonight's agenda. Um, we've already kind of um, gone through some of the welcome and the introductions. We'll start talking about the role of PTSA to begin with. Um, we'll give you some information and some um, kind of a glimpse in the day of what it's like to be a kindergartner in West Arundaquite. Um, we'll give you some tips for getting ready for kindergarten. Um, we have a wonderful little video snapshot of some of our kindergartners telling you what they love about kindergarten and um, what they have fun doing every day. Um, we'll go over some of the medical information um, that you'll need to know, and then we'll end with some of the next steps in terms of registration process, um, a screening that we would have in a typical non-COVID year, so I'll, um, I'll speak to that a little bit, um, and then just preparation for those first days of school. All very exciting. So when we talk about homeschool connection, this is something that um, we take very seriously and we're very committed to at Briarwood. It's so important for us to, um, to have that close communication with parents. Um, we love seeing you around the school. Um, in a typical year, we would see you in the school on a regular basis as you visit classrooms and walk through the halls. Um, there's a variety of different ways in which you can do this. We, of course, have our PTSA, um, Parent Teacher uh, Student Association. Um, really what we ask of parents and what you'll see modeled by us is just a general positivity. Um, our motto here is that we spread kindness like confetti. Um, it's something that we believe in that we wear literally on our t-shirts is be kind. Um, it's something that we really take to heart and that we teach our students every day and we model that every day as well. Um, we always have things available for parents such as parent-teacher conferences um, that are scheduled throughout the year, um, but you'll also find that teachers and myself are very much open and have open door policies um, to answer any questions that you may have. Um, we strongly encourage everyone to attend school events in a non-COVID year. Um, we, are, we typically have many school events um, that we plan in conjunction with our PTSA. Um, and we believe in really close communication with a classroom teacher. Um, and that's how we find our students are really most successful. Um, and there, you'll also receive uh, quite a bit of communication from the school in terms of um, newsletters that come out bi-monthly. And then we have monthly round trip news that we send out from Briarwood about some of the things happening in Briarwood. Um, and some of the, some tips that you need to know. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to become involved in the school. We strongly uh, encourage you to do so. We, um, we truly value you as partners in your child's education. Um, and we look forward to partnering with you as your child starts with us next year. So in terms of our PTSA, our Parent Teacher Student Association, Briarwood actually, they have a very successful PTSA that's quite involved. Um, they help to sponsor social events. Um, they help to do fundraisers, of course. Um, I don't know if you live in the neighborhood, we had Leo's fundraiser, Leo's Pies, um, right around Thanksgiving. Um, we do, uh, PTSA also helps to facilitate and sponsor different book fairs. Um, they take part in organizing cultural arts programs. Um, they make donations on behalf of Briarwood to different charities. Um, and they're quite involved in um, preparing, for example, arts and crafts activities uh, for students to do during recess. Um, 
and they're very creative as well, um, which we look forward to. And we really are so thankful for their creativity this year because we have been able to move forward with some of our more traditional practices, um, such as like a winter sing-along, even though we couldn't do um, what you might typically see in a year, we were able to do that virtually. And we really credit a lot of that to PTSA for helping us to think outside the box. So that is my PTSA plug. <laughs> and now for some of the fun, what we're doing in kindergarten on a daily basis. What you see in front of you is a schedule of a kindergarten classroom, maybe more towards the middle of kindergarten. It takes us a little bit in the beginning of the year to get into some of these routines. Once we get into these routines, our schedule is pretty rigid. Kids work well with a schedule. So during our day, some of our aspects include a morning meeting or community meeting where we all come together and greet one another and talk about different topics or questions, a reader's workshop and a writer's workshop where we talk about the five components of literacy, which include phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. We have a math workshop. We have social studies and science that might be embedded within a reader's or writer's workshop or a math workshop. Um, a period of our day is called response to intervention where every student receives intervention at their learning level. Um, throughout the day, we're working on social skill development, physical development, lunch and recess, and their special areas, which are art, music, physical education, and library. So what you can do to prepare your child for kindergarten um, is read to them daily. Students who are read to come into kindergarten with more of a letter name, letter sound, and an increased vocabulary. So the more you can read to them in the morning, at night, in the bathtub, in the car, whenever you can be introducing your child to new language, it's, it's very important to their school readiness. Um, other ways you can include reading is through um, board games, computer games, just any type of games that promote learning. So just some sort of natural ways you can include learning letters. You can start by taking their name and practicing the letters in their name. You can look around in your environment when you're driving, looking for letters and stop signs or grocery stores or wherever you're out in the um, environment playing games with your child that has them spy different things. There's, for an example, I spy. So I spy something that starts like b -b ball and they can think of something on their own. Um, I said, yep, trying to identify those letters in their name. Rhyming and alliteration is a huge phonemic awareness skill that we practice in kindergarten daily. And practicing the ABCs using different types of medium. So salt, sand, clay, chalk, paint. Don't be afraid to get dirty with them. <laughs> they use a lot of this in kindergarten and the more practice they have using it before is, is fun for them when they get to school. I think it's also important to note that wherever your child comes in to kindergarten, we meet them where they are. And if they don't know their letters in their name, we will have them exactly where they need to be um, when they exit kindergarten. So in terms of math skills, that's also something that you can naturally embed in your day. Um, maybe you're having a snack with your child and there's five goldfish and mom eats one goldfish. How many goldfish do you have left? So practice that counting skills, the one-to-one -one counting where they're pointing to each object and learning numbers zero through five. Um, when you are counting, it's important to count forward and backward, but also I know Veronica and I talked about today that left to right tracking when you're counting because it also um, correlates to your reading when you're reading from left to right across the page. So some of these social skills that are on this page are some of the things that help us get into that routine of being in school, like I mentioned before. So sticking to a schedule at home if students know, okay, first we brush our teeth, 
then we put our pajamas on, then we get in bed and we read a story. If that's something that's structured for them daily, it's easier to adjust to and learn to a new routine in school. Um, listening and following one or two step directions. First, I'd like you to do this. Then I would like you to do that and see if they can hold that direction in their brain. Doing simple chores like putting things away and dressing themselves. We see this at school. If they can take care of their area, their desk around them. Um, moving towards recess, it helps a lot if they are able to put that coat on, if they need help zipping at first, we're there to help them. But as long as they have some awareness of how to get ready for those um, times in their day. Back to playing games. It's important and it's hard, but in kindergarten, we don't all win when we're playing games. So it's important for students to know that it's okay if I lost. Next time I have another chance, I can win. So it's important to show them um, how to overcome those social those social emotional pieces when we don't always get what we want. And the being able to talk about feelings and talk about why something happened or what could go different next time, that verbal skill where students can figure out, you know, how I'm feeling or how that makes someone else feel in the class of the problem solving skills and coping strategies. So just a few social skills to think about. I'm sure it's all naturally done in your homes and we just like to show what works best when, when kids do come to kindergarten. And along with reading to your children, talking to them just all day long whenever you can in those complete sentences, we want children to move away from baby talk and inform more complete thoughts. This translates in their reading and in their writing. Um, expanding your child's vocabulary if they want to know why or what, what something means. I know what is this, why is this is always a big question. Feel free to just expand on all those experiences that they're questioning about. Making eye contact when talking to your child so that when they're in class and we're in our community meeting, they're comfortable looking at another child saying good morning to them. And working on what a learner looks like and sounds like. So when a student is talking, a teacher is talking, we're listening, we're looking, and we're thinking in our brain about what that person is saying. That's all part of our first month of kindergarten also, our listening Larry, talking about whole body listening. So we'll, we'll be talking about it a lot too. So if you could prep them with that, that would be a lot, very helpful for us. So thank you. So on the next slide, we have a video of what it is like to be in kindergarten featuring some of um, our own kindergartners here in West Ronquay. Be brave, like don't, like don't be scared anymore because you like in preschool you are like really good. You're gonna be good in kindergarten too. Kindergarten is fun. Read sometimes, we do math like right now, we learn 3D shapes. Because I like to have fun and read and draw pictures and be active and sing. We go to Hello Nature Center. Because you get to listen to all your teachers, and it's really fun that your teachers always listen to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're really, really, really kind to you. <laughs> I've learned spelling. We learn about telling time.
like when we have PE because it's um, active and it's fun. Best part is about kindergarten is playtime because I like to play a lot with my friends a lot. Oh, I get to have special visitors and um, we like um, learn. I think we like learn stuff every day. We have recess, we have lunch, we have relax and learn, and sometimes we have special activities. Always be nice. Be brave. Help others. Have fun and um, play with some friends. <laughs> yep. Now you know all about kindergarten. The be brave. Like, don't be brave. There we go. And just like our friends said in our video, we're here to have fun. Kindergarten is one of the most exciting, fun times of their childhood memories, and we're here to have all the fun with them. And they really do have a lot of fun in kindergarten. I can attest to that as someone who regularly visits the kindergarten classrooms. <laughs> Um, the students are so engaged in their learning, and um, they they have fun, um, and they're so excited to talk about what they're learning, um, and you can just see it in their faces. It's great. Um, so the next slide, we're going to transition a little bit to talking about um, some of the health forms that you received in your registration packets and the paperwork um, that you received in the mail. Um, because of the um, kind of the density of the information that's going to be shared, the next PowerPoint slide has been voice recorded by one of our West Veronica K3 school nurses. Um, and then we, of course, we are lucky enough to have our own Briarwood um, school nurse, Mrs. Lisa Maripes, on the Zoom with us as well, so that she can um, help to answer any questions that you may have after you listen to this information. Hello, I'm Lona Cornell, RN. On behalf of the West Aranda Coit School District K-3 Health Offices, I would like to welcome this coming year's kindergarten families. I am going to discuss information that you will need prior to your child beginning kindergarten. You may have already filled out a kindergarten registration packet on the district website, but if you need assistance, please contact the district's registration office at 585-336-6743 or your child's home school. In the registration packet, you will find many forms, but I'm going to talk about the forms specifically needed for the health office. Number one, health and development. This form reviews your child's health history from birth to present. We would like to know things that could possibly affect your child's stay at school. Just think, what would I want staff to know about my child? Such as sleep habits, bowel and bladder habits, stage of potty training, or special eating habits. Please feel free to add anything not mentioned on the form. Number two, confidential student health information update. This form allows specific health information that you would want shared with staff members that may interact with your child during the school day, such as life-threatening allergies, asthma, seizures, or diabetes. Sharing this information allows staff to know what symptoms to look for. A new one of these forms needs to be filled out every school year. Number three, disclosure of protected health information, also known as the HIPAA form. This form gives staff permission to give or receive health information with your child's healthcare professional, such as physicals and medication orders. A new one of these forms needs to be filled out every school year. Physical and health assessment. Although a blank physical form is included, your child's doctor will document the physical electronically. You can ask for a copy or ask that it be faxed to your child's home school. 
an up-to-date physical is required by New York State mandate to begin kindergarten. The physical is acceptable if it is dated up to but not beyond one year prior to the first day of school in September. So if school begins on September 3rd this year, the physical can be dated as far back as September 3rd of last year. Number five, the dental certificate. Although not mandated by New York State, our hope is that your child has seen a dentist by the time they enter kindergarten. When they do, have the dentist complete this form and return it to the school. Number six, immunizations. You will find a form explaining what New York State mandated immunizations your child needs to have received at age five to start school. Most pediatricians will not do their five-year physical and immunizations until they've had their fifth birthday. If your child turns five after the start of school, they may start school, but they would have 14 days after their fifth birthday to complete their immunizations. The most common vaccines due at that age are the fifth DTAP, the second MMR, and the second varicella. If, if your child is on a catch-up schedule with the pediatrician, then the health office would need documentation from the doctor with the catch-up plan and your child's appointment dates. Please note that the completed physicals and immunizations are required for fully, fully remote learners as well. The same rules apply even though they don't physically attend school. Some other additional important information. If your child will need to take medication while at school, an adult will need to bring the medication to the health office when school starts. It needs to be in the original container and we will need a doctor's order either brought by the adult or the doctor's office can fax it to the health office. Please note that students may not bring medication to school themselves for safety reasons. You will receive additional information in the mail over the summer, which may include a form called permission to administer over-the-counter meds. This allows the health office to administer stock non-prescription medications such as calamine lotion for itches, Vaseline or Blistex for chapped lips, and saline solution or eye wash for flushing the eyes for something like an eyelash. Also, if brought in from home, the health office can administer sunscreen and cough drops. You should plan on your child going outside for recess on any day that the temperature and wind chill is above 20 degrees and it is not raining. Please ensure that your child comes to school with the appropriate footwear and outdoor clothing. Also, it is not unusual for some kindergartners to have unexpected accidents at school. Having a change of clothing to be kept in their backpack or cubby is very helpful. Lastly, it is very important that staff at the school can contact families when needed. Please use the parent portal to update any contact person's names and phone numbers. Remember to do this, especially if someone gets a new phone number. If you need more information about the parent portal, please contact the building secretary at your child's home school. We look forward to meeting the next kindergartners and their families and teaming with them to create a safe and healthy environment to learn and grow. Thank you. So hopefully that gave you some context for the um, health packet that you received in the mail. Um, you know, you're probably, that was, we understand that was a lot of information. And so we do want to um, take some time at the end to address any questions that you have and make sure that you feel um, comfort, comfortable and confident to start the registration process if you have not already started it already. Um, so if you're asking yourself, what should I do next? Um, I'm going to give you the name of someone who is very, very important here at Briarwood. And her name is Amber Cash. She is our school secretary. Um, you could think of her almost like the heart of Briarwood. <laughs> she, 
she can uh, work magic and uh, you can call the main line of the school. It is 336-1610. Um, and she can help you, she can uh, help to connect you with me. She can help to connect you with um, Mrs. Merapies and we can answer any questions that you might have as you start going through this process. Um, so uh, Amber Cash, a very important person to know as you will soon find out. Rena, there was a question in the chat about if they haven't received a registration packet, would they also contact Amber or the registration office? Nothing was mailed home. It was all through email. Oh, yes, it was through email this year. Yeah, that was one change. Thank you for clar clarifying that. Yes, it was all through email. So if you did not receive the email, then yes, you would want to call district office. And we can, if it's easier for you to call the school, we can always help, help you to navigate that. So that was one change we made this year. Typically our registration packets are mailed out. Um, and this year we are trying to be a little bit more paper light and um, trying to look at some of the silver linings through COVID and they have forced us to go um, to become a little bit more tech savvy. Um, and so we're trying to trim down our paper use as well. So some of the registration next steps. Um, it's important for you to have the information um, to district office by April 1st. Um, we do have a couple of drop-in sessions to help you fill out any of this paperwork. Those are scheduled for early March, um, and you're welcome to call the school for those exact dates. I believe one of them is March 10th, um, and I believe you, got, you also received that information in the email that was sent out, and it had a link so that you were um, able to register and could send an RSVP for that. So if that's something that you need, um, please put a note in the chat and we'll make sure to get you those dates. Um, so there is the two page registration form that needs to be returned to district office with the completed materials. Uh, it's important that you return the paperwork by April 1st because that really helps us with our planning for next year. Typically each one of our K3 elementary schools has two sections of kindergarten. Um, and each building has approximately 165 students. Because we are, um, we believe in our neighborhood schools, um, we try to maintain those two sections of kindergarten and much of that is based on um, the paperwork that you send, send in to us for registration. Um, the health and developmental history, uh, those are the forms that uh, Ms. Cornell, the voice that you heard on the previous, on, uh, the previous health slide uh, took you through. And you can also be um, filling that out and sending it in. Um, make sure that you have that health physical scheduled for your child. Um, and then you can return that form to the school nurse before the first day of school. Um, the transportation request is also very important. Um, and I'll speak to that a little bit more in the coming slide so that you have a little bit more information about transportation. Um, any additional information that you feel is needed for placement, um, you can just put that in writing with an explanation um, and that sh can be sent in by May 1st. Anything like that, the additional information that can be sent directly to me, um, you can send it to, um, you can always call the school um, and drop it off or you can send it to my email as well. Um, hopefully from the previous slides, um, you are, um, you know, what we want you to communicate most of all to your child is that learning is really fun and school is a fun place to be. And we're also here to help you through this process, so don't hesitate to reach out to us for anything. We typically have kindergarten screenings. Those are in person. Um, due to some of the restrictions around COVID-19, um, there'll be more information coming to you um, about the kindergarten screenings, and that will be sent to you in the mail 
um, after that April 1st registration date has been um, has passed. The kindergarten screening is um, something that um, you know we would uh, essentially it's a time for us to get to know um, your child to understand their school readiness um, and where some of their skill sets are at so that we can be um, as prepared as we can to support them on that very first day of kindergarten. In terms of transportation, we transport within the West Aronaquate Central School District boundary. Um, a child can be transported to a daycare within West Aronaquate, but not outside of the West Aronaquate School District. Um, it's very important that the um, the, let's say if you want to go to daycare um, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, but um, a drop off at home for Tuesday and Thursday, that is something that we cannot accommodate. But if you want to drop off five days a week at a daycare within West Aronaquite, that is something that we do accommodate. So the drop off and pick up um, locations, has, it has to be consistent. You can always decide to pick your child up early from school. Um, we just ask that you send a note in um, to, your teach, to your child's teacher. And then that note is given to our um, school secretary and she helps to coordinate the pickup and make sure that your child's name is taken off the bus list for that day so they aren't accidentally put on the bus. Once we have registration, um, after that April 1st date, you'll get detailed information about bus and transportation. That will come mid-August. Um, and that's, of course, if you, choose for, if you choose to have transportation. Some students are dropped off and picked up every day. Breakfast and lunch. Um, breakfast, lunch, and milk are available for all students. Um, students have essentially what's like a, a debit card that's linked to their student ID number that you can load money onto. Um, and that way they're able to purchase um, lunch when they don't bring it from home. In a typical school year, um, students gather by class in our um, APR, our all-purpose room. Uh, it serves as a cafeteria during our lunch hour and also serves uh, as a place for physical education. It's like a large auditorium. Um, this year it's being used as a second grade classroom, um, which is, um, is turning out to be an excellent classroom space actually and the teacher loves it and the students love it. So that's working out nicely. Um, but typically the students would eat in the APR. Um, it's a time for them to build independent habits um, where they're opening up packages, they're sitting down when eating, they're throwing away their own garbage. We do have free and reduced lunch forms that um, must be completed each year. Um, we also have lunch monitors that are there to assist students, um, remind them of expectations, and just there to be a helping hand um, and read stories to them at the end of lunch. Um, and the lunch monitors and the students, um, you know, end up having um, uh, just, you know, it's another supportive adults in the, in the building and another kind face. Some of our, um, in terms of the first day of school, we, uh, the calendar dates are forthcoming. It has not been finalized yet. The first day of school for kindergarten is always going to be the first day, um, just as it is for uh, our other first to 12th graders. It's not a it's not a half day, um, it's not on, held on a separate date. Our school hours are North End, Colebrook, Listwood, and Seneca are early schools and they um, generally start instruction at 8.30 and end at 2.30. This year it's a little bit different. We um, students start walking through Colebrook doors at about 8 a.m. And then here at Briarwood, we begin school. Um, students arrive at nine o'clock um, up until about 9.30 and dismissal begins about three. Excuse me while I turn my lights on. Brenda, there was a question in the chat about um, lunch and my school box. Yeah. If there are two children at Briarwood, would they need two separate accounts or can they be joined for my school box? 
So you would have to, because the money is stored under the student ID number, it would have to be um, a second account. Oh. I can confer, I'll confirm that for you, but because I was gonna we say the same thing, but I didn't. Yeah, we look it up under the student ID number. So we understand that was a lot of information. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing the screen so I can see everyone's faces and see the chat. And we can answer any questions that you might have and just have a discussion around kindergarten and what you're excited about. Yeah, Melissa Young. Um, hi. Um, I was just wondering, because my son will have to be um, picked up at a daycare every day. Is that form on the district's website as well? The transportation form? Yes, and I believe okay. it will, yeah, it, it's on the um, district, it is on the district website, and I believe it should have also been included in the, um, the electronic information that you receive via email as well. Okay, thank you. Yes. There's a question about class sizes. Do we expect them to be larger next year? Class sizes generally um, are anywhere between 18, the most we to about 23 in kindergarten is what we typically see. We can go higher than that. Um, and generally our class sizes are pretty stable and there are around 20 students per, per class. We do have the support of a teacher's assistant as well. Um, so another adult to help to support the kindergarten um, students and the classroom teacher. anyone have a child that's already excited about coming to Briarwood for kindergarten? Yes, I see. <laughs> We're excited to meet you. First and last name? No, I would say just first name if possible. For them to practice those letters, the letter recognition in those in their name, and then eventually we'll get into writing them. So if they can practice writing and spelling, that would be a, a great help on the first name. So the um, for this school year, the children are. Um, the way we have our classrooms set up is we have about, in the kindergarten classrooms, we have um, in one room, we have, uh, in both rooms, we have approximately 15 desks um, and each desk is set about six feet apart from the other one. Um, and the students do wear masks during the day. Um, they can take mass breaks. Um, they do eat lunch at their um, desk this year. Um, and then they also, they wear their masks outside for recess, but they can take mass breaks um, in different areas outside as well. Um, I'm amazed at what our, um, what our small friends are able to do. Um, they can really wear their mask all day. Um, we don't generally see any um, students who have a lot of issues with it. They, they become accustomed to it. Um, and then for those students that do need more regular mass breaks, we work with um, that student and that student's family to ensure that the student is feeling comfortable and supported in class. Ms. Macera, do you want to add anything to that? I am also amazed at how they came into the school year ready to wear a mask and we do take our mask breaks 
during our snack time, our lunch time. They are able to ask if they need one. They know that it needs to be worn over their nose. They're, they're doing really well with, with the task of wearing a mask all day. Mm -hmm. That's something that um, might be an issue, maybe starting a little bit earlier in the summer, just practice wearing it a little bit at a time. 15 minutes here, 20 minutes here, and just building up some, some time for that. Any other questions or anything that we can help you with? So a question about um, whether or not students are going to be attending class every day next year. So this year, students attend Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday um, here at Briarwood. And um, honestly, right now, we are planning next year with a plan A, B, C, and D model um, because we're not entirely sure what the CDC guidance will entail at that time. Um, while we hope to be open five days a week and be back in business, um, we're not able to, um, to promise that at this time. On our Wednesdays this, this year, even though students are not in the building with us, it is a time for what we have termed asynchronous learning, um, where the students engage in um, different online platforms. Um, and of course, our kindergartners work up to that, that level. And they have some take home assignments to do um, and some schoolwork to complete on that, on that Wednesday. So it is still considered a learning day. Yes, each kindergarten classroom does have a bathroom. That's a great question. Um, does have a bathroom and we do have cubbies inside each kindergarten classroom uh, as well. So students can keep their things right in the classroom. Are there any questions and any health related questions that you might have? So as I mentioned, we um, have one to two dates where you can go to the district office and get some in-person support on filling out that paperwork. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, just let me know or you can call school tomorrow. If you don't already have the information for it, please call the school and we'll provide it to you. Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're very excited about meeting our incoming kindergartners. Yes, welcome to the new faces and it's nice to see some of the old ones, so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. don't hesitate to call and reach out to us for anything. We're definitely here to support you. One more question. Will my yeah. child get a tour of the building? Um, yes, we were able to do um, small tours and you will be able to meet the kindergarten teacher before mm -hmm. the school day. <laughs> Bye.
Bye.